We are going to talk about higher self and that is really the objective of all of the systems of magic and spirituality and a lot of the different schools of philosophy are all about self-knowledge uh, and self-awareness and I'm going to offer everything I can to assist you guys in understanding what this phenomenon can be and also how to avail yourselves of it in ways that are productive and safe. Uh, and a proper understanding of magic, if you're going down that road, is also really important. You don't want to be like the sorcerer's apprentice and end up with too much enthusiasm that isn't tempered by wisdom and experience. Also, you know, I think when you realize that you have aligned yourself with a sort of preternatural consciousness or you've accessed a greater field of information, uh, you can get a little bit cocky. What I've experienced throughout my life uh, it's really just in the last couple of years that I've really been forced to accept that whatever the holy guardian angel is, as Aleister Crowley referred to it, or the higher self, I've always had a dialogue um, with that part of myself or whatever that is. Uh, from the time that I was a small child, I got advice uh, from this voice in my head, I guess, that now as an adult, I realize couldn't possibly have come from me. It didn't come from my environment. There's no chance of those things. What is the higher self? What is the holy guardian angel? If you go back to ancient Greece and you were to ask Pythagoras or Aristotle or Plato, um, they would say that it is your personal daemon. Daemon, of course, is a word that has come to uh, represent evil forces. Uh, the word dominion, for example, uh, comes from the idea of uh, daemonion, which was the rule of the spirit over the material. And so it used to actually have a very positive um, inflection to it. And it was often also sort of interchangeably spoken about as genius. Um, your genius was sort of like your personal daemon um, that would guide you. Uh, and um, the higher self was also kind of thought of as the totality of consciousness, sort of like the Godhead. And so... The objective is to make contact with this aspect of self. Uh, Jung, uh, who is an invaluable uh, agent in the dispensation of higher consciousness, in my opinion, um, he defined the self as that which is produced by the interaction of the conscious and the subconscious. And that reminds me of uh, another idea from the occult that tells us that it's the two... Um, opposing poles uh, of the electromagnetic wave, the interaction of them that gives rise to a third field um, or a third thing, uh, and that thing is consciousness. Uh, it's also interesting to note that we have two eyes here and a third one here that produce an equilateral triangle. Uh, all of these uh, really central occult symbols actually relate back to all of this stuff. This alchemical secret of the interaction of opposites and opposing forces producing a third thing of a higher nature, that is very much reminiscent of Jung's interpretation of the self. It kind of begs the question, uh, assuming that this phenomena is real, what is it? Is it ourselves projected into the future or perfected in the future, transmitting this information back to us? Physics even suggests to us that time is not linear. So we would have, in that case, a transtemporal identity. Uh, all of our past selves would also still exist uh, in the past. You know, the totality of uh, time and space uh, is omnipresent. Find that to be a pretty interesting uh, possibility, but then I can't imagine our future selves sitting around transmitting information back to our past selves um, as if we have nothing better to do uh, in infinite time and space. This is actually from a paper uh, from the University of Tennessee. I don't see an author called Evolution, Jung, and Theurgy. Uh, and it is, well, it's just part of the paper. Uh, in Jungian psychology, a special role is played by the self, which for clarity I'll call the higher self. The higher self comprehends the totality of the archetypal field, and therefore it comprises all the archetypes. Thus, the higher self comprehends the collective unconscious, and so it must be carefully distinguished from the individual conscious ego, uh, which is just one of its organs. The higher self is the 
psychical correlate of the human genome, and thus it represents the phylogenetic destiny of the human species. That is, the higher self corresponds to the anthro... It has the Greek there, I have to remember. Anth anthropos? Anthropos? Yeah. Uh, the archetypal human, familiar from Gnostic and Hermetic texts. The higher self brings transpersonal meaning and purpose into our lives and defines the um, providence. Uh, and this is interesting because um, one of the things that I have talked about, pronoia as opposed to paranoia, and the idea basically is that, you know, once you are aware of your own fundamental true will and you have started to act in accordance with it and then you... Um, hopefully organically find yourself uh, in alignment with the collective well-being. You are swept along by forces greater than your own will and your own fate and destiny because you have aligned yourself with this collective mind. Um, and so you find yourself supported by the universe in all kinds of remarkable ways. Uh, if, you're, you know, if you've lived on the edge like I have my entire life, uh, and you found yourself completely out of options and totally fucked uh, countless times and something just always happens. Um, you know, it, it, especially the more you are um, in alignment with your purpose and the, you know what I mean? Um, it's pro -noia. And I didn't realize this until today, but the Greek word for providence uh, is... Um, Pronoia. It's spelled pronoia. That's not exactly the pronunciation, but it's spelled exactly pronoia. Providence. Um, you can't make this stuff up. The pronoia governing all humans. Further, as we have seen, behind the personified archetypes are the more remote, unpersonified archetypal ideas corresponding to natural and mathematical law. These two are part of the higher self, and therefore... Uh, constitutive of our destiny to live meaningful significant lives then we should live in conscious intentional accord with the destiny of the universe Jung called this lifelong process individuation because through it a person becomes individual or individuous that is undivided integral as the Jungian analysis Anthony Stevens says, individuation is a conscious attempt to bring the universal program of human existence to the fullest possible expression in the life of the individual. Wisdom, then, is to be guided by the higher self. The transcendent higher self, corresponding to the genome, also has an imminent projection, and we may identify, perhaps, the imminent higher self with the personal or guardian demon, at least in some versions of the idea. Dodds argues that from the Arabic period, someone's personal daemon was virtually synonymous with their destiny. And George Luck remarked that the daimonian could be called the super-rational personality that controls the whole of our lives, and that word, daimonium, is actually where the word dominion comes from. Jung stresses that the higher self is paradoxical and even contradictory because it comprehends all the opposites. He calls it the unus mundus, but in Neoplatonic terms, it is the inexpressible one which unifies mind, matter, unity and plurality, stability and change, indeed being and non-being. The only way to bridge these contradictions, according to Jung, is by a symbolic process, which he calls the transcendent function. This is the basis for the essential role of symbols in theurgy. Okay, he couldn't explicitly say this is the alchemical process in the lives of individual people. So, you know, it's a really interesting question. What exactly is the holy guardian angel? What exactly is the higher self? Uh, and I, I think that that's one of those things that we just may never answer. Um, the important thing is that we develop the skill set to have access to it, the humility uh, to keep ourselves out of trouble once that happens, and um, the wisdom to be able to distinguish between uh, legitimate input and information from our higher self um, 
as opposed to wish demons and goic fantasies and all of that sort of thing. Uh, and that, you know, as Aleister Crowley said, the number one mistake that the magician makes is to think that his magic can do more for him than it can. Having that humility and developing that wisdom is um, one of the central things of importance if you're going to um, set out on this path. Some people seem to have an innate connection with this sort of thing, like myself. You know, I have never had to question what my purpose was. I have always uh, sort of been compelled to act upon certain lines. And it's not like this is something that I put myself on a pedestal over because, you know, everything has a way of balancing itself out. And I, I don't know what I was watching, but I saw a guy today talking, he was having his spiritual awakening. And he was talking about his reversal of values. And it occurred to me that I had always had that reversal that he was talking about. And he was almost disturbed by it. Like it was just so devastating to be uprooted and sort of taken from your comfortable couch watching CNN or Fox News and tossed uh, into a gale storm at high winds um, sort of thing. And I realized that for myself, it was kind of the opposite because I've always had this complete and total investment um, in metaphysics and the mysteries and the dispensation of consciousness, just compelled to do that. Um, but almost n nothing else has any value at all. Um, and it's, of course, made it difficult for me um, to navigate the normal world because I never had that value. You know, I never had that idea that your self-worth and your dignity is based on how much money you have or any of that stuff. I've never had any relationship to any of that. So the, the thing that must be done is, you know, to establish balance if you didn't have it in the first place or to make sure that you maintain it throughout this process. Because in my opinion, one of the most important motivating factors for pursuing this kind of holistic self and this self-knowledge and this connection to our, our genius and our, our holy guardian angel um, is that the world needs us to revolutionize ourselves, right? We're not just doing this for ourselves. We're doing this, well, we are. Uh, we think of collective service as self-denial, and if you really think about it, that doesn't make sense either. If you are really functionally serving the collective, unless you have somehow managed to extricate yourself from that collective, you are part of it. So collective service is self-service. We have been deliberately indoctrinated to believe that it's one or the other uh, in order to, to keep us within certain strictures, within certain political parameters in our thinking. Uh, and obviously, that's not working out too well. In several different schools of the occult, we have this idea of the uh, macroprosopus or the Adam Cadman, uh, the universal mind, this greater consciousness of which each of us is a part. And when we realize that we need to heal ourselves, you know, we speak about get, becoming whole again, right? As if we are, uh, the different pieces of our psyche have been fragmented and tossed around. Uh, and so, our job is to reassemble them and become whole again, right? Well, each of us is also a piece of this collective mind, and we must reassemble uh, the collective psyche, um, or even possibly what we're doing is assembling it for the first time, uh, which is kind of an interesting thought that the universe and consciousness evolution is actually moving somewhere. It's going somewhere. And the archaic revival that Terrence McKenna talked about is not necessarily just circling back. It's circling back, but going forward at the same time. Um, you can think of it like the Fibonacci sequence that goes back a number, copies, and then moves forward, and goes back and copies and moves forward. Everything in the universe moves according to that sort of cycle. So and I want to take a little bit of a deviation here to talk about genius in general, uh, because that is actually something that you know the ancient Greeks uh, sort of equated with this higher self. And there are different schools of thought about this, and I think that's because there are different versions of genius. There are people that have astronomically high IQs, and they are just always super intelligent. And, you know, breaking the mold, and they're Albert Einstein, and they're, um, oh man, I wish I could remember this guy's name. Um, there's a, uh, the guy with the world, just, just YouTube, um, 
the guy with the world's highest IQ. Um, but the other idea is that we actually can sort of deactivate the filtration system in our consciousness through breath work and psychedelics and other sorts of disciplines and traditions and access the universal mind or a greater mind. And in that way, I think every single person is capable of genius. I'm definitely not super intelligent every moment of my existence, um, but I do feel like I have these moments that I think qualify as genius. And I don't think that that's out of reach for any person at all whatsoever. It has nothing to do with IQ. What it has to do with is knowing your fundamental purpose, to be in touch with your true will and to understand why you're here. Um, one of the great benefits of this from a practical point of view is that it streamlines your focus, right? If you don't know why you're here and what you're doing in this ocean of chaos, um, it will be the authorities that inform, form in your mind, their view of reality. And if your compass is you know, spinning wildly, um, somebody is going to point you in a direction and set you to task. You know, if you don't do it yourself, uh, someone will repurpose you according to their own designs. Um, and, uh, you know, I mean, this is probably the thing that I say the most on this channel. It is definitely, without question, a crisis of purpose that has caused the chaosrophy that we're living in. It is what has made people into these malleable zombies. Um, it is what has made people directionless. It is the reason the oceans are testing positive for Xanax and you know the Thames is testing positive for cocaine. Um, it's the reason for school shootings. It's the reason why um, men are committing SUIC whatever algorithm uh, at the highest rate in, in human history. Uh, it's the reason for all the vapid bimbos on social media. Um, and it's the reason why social media is being used as um, a sort of uh, collective pool of narcissism instead of a soul-enriching uh, source of free information. Um, you know, there are a lot of layers to this. And if you think about it, it's totally consistent with this idea of the higher self being the fundament of the thing of fundamental importance uh, for humanity. Because when people are disengaged uh, from that aspect of themselves or that aspect of the universal mind, um, they become lost. Their life is pointless. Uh, you know, you I, I can't imagine how you can place value uh, on a life that is lived purposely purposelessly, without purpose. Aleister Crowley, basically, his message, despite whatever weirdness might have come with it, uh, was basically that people needed to attain to their own sovereignty. Um, that, you know, you have to discover your true will and then constrain every deed, every thought, every breath to the fulfillment of that true will. And just to clarify, this isn't necessarily um, like a pastime or even a profession. It's something deeper than that. It's the fundamental essence of a person. Uh, and in order to really do that well, uh, establishing this knowledge and conversation with the Holy Guardian Angel or creating a, uh, making yourself a hollow tube to bring down fire from heaven, um, you know, those two related tasks sort of combine. Um, and the result of that is that people know their trajectory and the amount of conflict in human civilization is greatly reduced. The need for government is eliminated um, and so on and so forth. And uh, Carl Jung actually had a very similar um, to the point of being almost suspicious uh, position on all of this. Uh, he referred to it as your higher self. And as I said earlier, his definition of self was um, that the subconscious and conscious had an interaction and that produced this uh, sort of yin yang um, personality uh, that was a byproduct of those two things. And the goal basically of individuation, it was to be able to transcend them both and get control of these hemispheres uh, by means of integration. Um, but it's basically the same thing. So check this out. I, I want to, because I, I went into Reddit to look around and see if anyone had noticed this. And, you know, people were like, oh, uh, what's his name? Uh, uh, Jung wouldn't have had any value in Crowley's work, you know, all this sort of thing. 
Let me get myself out of the way. Liber Novus, Liber Legis. They're both red. The type set is even similar. I don't know, you know. It kind of looks to me like Crowley was an influence on Carl Jung. Jung? Yoon, actually. Do me a favor and hit the like button, share, subscribe, support us on uh, Patreon where you can access secret streams. Um, particularly, I think, the Masonic Degree 28 that took three months. Uh, but I also wanted to take a second to thank UOU, uh, Alpha Draconian, Chef Zone, uh, Spiral Out, and I think that's it. All new patrons. So um, I, I, I really appreciate you guys. I can't tell you how meaningful it is when I wake up uh, and find money in the Cash App or the PayPal or the Zelle or whatever, uh, or the Patreon. Um, and it gives me the determination to keep going despite shadow bans and 